Okay, welcome back to the 2023 final exam review for Algebra 2. Uh, in this video, we're going to cover section 8, where we find products of polynomials. So, let's get into it. For number 85, we have 7n minus 3 times 8n minus 3. So before you took my class, you probably learned the FOIL method to, mu uh, to multiply polynomials, and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, so spelling out FOIL, FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, last. It's the way that I learned how to uh, multiply polynomials when I first was taking algebra 2 uh, a while back. Um, and how we do that is we multiply the first two terms in our polynomial. So we have 7n times 8n. That's going to give us 56n squared. Then we do the outer terms. So this first term here and this last term here. We have minus 21n. We do the inner terms, so this last term and this first term, we get minus 24n. And then we do the last terms, so the last term here and the last term here. When we multiply all of that together, we have this. And then we just want to combine like terms. When we do that, we have 56n squared minus 45 n, because these two right here combine, and then we have plus 9. And we're done. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with this, with this method. Um, however, I'm actually going to advocate for a different method, and all of you have seen me talk about this uh, a bunch of times throughout the, the year. And I, I commonly just call it the box method uh, for reasons that we, we make a box with it. And so how this one works is we set it up a little bit differently. So we still have our 7n minus 3 times 8n minus 3. But how we set this up is I make a 2 by 2 box. It's a 2 by 2 box because we have two terms times two terms. And so I put the first one on top, we have 7n minus 3, and the second one uh, along the side. So we have 8n minus 3. And then we just go and fill out all of the uh, boxes that we have, uh, just like we would like a multiplication grid. So we have 7n times 8n, which is 56n squared, 8n times negative 3, so that's going to be negative 24n. Then we have 7n times negative 3, so our negative 21n. Then we have negative 3 times negative 3, which is our plus 9. And so when we add all of this together, we have our 56n squared here. And along the diagonal here, we have all of these, or in this case only two of them, but we have these two terms that group together. And we have minus 45n. And lastly, we have our plus 9. And so you see that we, we still get the same answer, uh, and there's nothing wrong with either one of these approaches. The reason that I advocate for this approach, however, is because when we start multiplying larger and larger polynomials, it can get kind of out of hand with the amount of things that you have to remember to multiply together. Um, and I'm not aware of any, I guess you would call that uh, an acronym, for maybe a 3 by 3, you know, uh, you know a trinomial times a trinomial. Um, and, but yeah, it gets kind of out of hand with all the things that you have to make sure that you multiply with these little arcs here. And so when you make a grid like this, it ensures that you have all of your terms multiplied together. It makes sure that you don't miss any of them. Um, it also makes sure that we don't just multiply 
the first one and the last one and then call it a day. Because a very common mistake that I've seen throughout the year is something like this, where we have maybe something like x plus 3 squared. A lot of students like to say that this is equal to x squared plus 9 and be done with it. But this is not the case because x plus 3 squared really means x plus 3 times x plus 3. And so let me make sure that is not, this is not equal. But if we multiply out like this and we make a box, you can of course use your FOIL method again, but we have x plus 3 times x plus 3. We see that we have x squared here, plus 3x, plus 3x, and then plus 9, which means that we have our x squared here, plus 3x, plus 3x, so plus 6x, and then plus 9. So it's very common for Algebra 2 students to neglect this middle term right here. And so anytime we are squaring something and we can write it out explicit like, explicitly like this, when we multiply using our box method, I mean, I guess you could use FOIL for this as well, nothing wrong with that. But I think uh, this is kind of a a way to ensure that we avoid doing a mistake like this. So for the remainder of this video, I'm going to use uh, the box method to multiply these out, and because this is the method that I've used throughout the school year. So to keep in line with that, I'll continue to use it for writing out the rest of this review. So for number 86, we have 3r plus 3 times 5r plus 3. I'll write our answer right there, but to work it out, I'll make a 2x2 two two box. And we have 3r plus 3 here, and 5r plus 3 there. So we have 3r times 5r, which is 15r squared. We have 5r times 3, which is 15r. We have 3r times 3, which is 9r. And we have 3 times 3, which is 9. Adding all of our terms together, we have our r squareds right here. So we have 15r squared. We have 15 plus 9, which is 24, so 24r. And then we have our 9 right here. And so we have plus 9. And so for number 86, this is our answer. Also, to be clear from up here, our answer for number 85 was this right here. So let's look at the next one for number 87. So for 87, we have 6r minus 8 times n plus, oh sorry, that's 6n minus 8 times n plus 6. So, uh, let's see, maybe I'll format this a little bit differently and I'll put the equals over here. So, time to make a box. We have a 2 by 2 box since we have two binomials that we're multiplying together. So we have 6n minus 8 and n plus 6. Multiplying everything together, we have 6n times n, which is 6n squared. We have n times negative 8, so negative 8n. 6n times 6, which is 36n. And 6 times negative 8, which is negative 48. Combining everything together, we have n squareds here, so we have 6n squared, 
And you're going to notice that as we do all of these, especially if they're already in standard form, which all of the ones in, in this section are, uh, they tend to group along the diagonals. In fact, uh, it's not even they tend to. It looks like uh, practically all of them do. Um, so negative 8n and 36n, uh, we know that these diagonals are in generally they're going to combine because they have the same exponent. So this is n to the first, this is n to the first. This is nice because we have 36 minus 8. And so we're going to get 28n. And lastly, we have minus 48. And so this is our final answer. For the next one, for number 88, we have 8n minus 4 times 2n plus 3. So let's make a box. We have 8n minus 4 and 2n plus 3. So we have 2n times 8n. This is going to be 16n squared. We have 2n times negative 4, so negative 8n. We have 8n times 3, which is 24n. And we have 3 times negative 4, which is negative 12. Combining like terms, we have n squared here. So we have 16n squared. We have 24n minus 8n, which is 16n. And then we have minus 12, so minus 12. And this is our final answer. Now they get a little bit harder. For number 89, we have a binomial times a trinomial. We have 9 minus, sorry, n minus 8 times n squared plus 3n plus 2. And something I forgot to mention here is that it doesn't matter which polynomial you put on the top and the side. Um, because multiplication is commutative, meaning that we can switch around the order, aka like a times b is the same thing as b times a, uh, it doesn't matter which side we put either one of these. Um, so when I'm doing something like number 89, uh, just because we write from left to right, I don't want to make a vertical box. I tend to just put, make it a, like a sideways box like this. So that's wider than it is taller, just to conserve space. But that's really the only motivation that I write it out like this instead of making a vertical one. But we have n minus 8 times n squared plus 3n plus 2. And same thing, we just multiply everything out. We have n times n squared, which is n cubed. We have n times 3n, which is 3n squared. We have n times 2, which is 2n. We have negative 8 times n squared, which is negative 8n squared. We have negative 8 times 3n, negative 24n. And we have negative 8 times 2, which is negative 16. Adding, uh, combining all of our like terms, we only have 1n cubed here. And then, again, along these diagonals, we have n squared here. And we have n's right here. So we have negative 8n squared plus 3n, which is going to be negative 5n squared. And then we have negative 24n plus 2n, which is negative 22n. And lastly, we have our minus 16. And so this is our final answer. For number 90. We have 2p plus 3 times 7p squared plus 7p plus 8. 
So, make our box. And I just like to make mine wider than taller to conserve space. So we have 2p plus 3 here, and we have 7p squared plus 7p plus 8. So, first term we have is 2p times 7p squared. This is going to be 14p cubed. We have 2p times 7p, which is 14p. We have 2p times 8p, which is 16p. We have 3 times 7p squared, so 21p squared. We have 3 times 7p, which is 21p. And then 3 times 8, which is 24. Uh, oh, I forgot a p squared here. See? So, we have our p squareds here. We have our p's here. And so we say that this is 14p cubed. We have 21 times, uh, sorry, plus 14, which is 35. So 35p squared. We have 21 plus 16, which is 37p. And then our last term is 24. And so this is our final answer. Let's go over to number 91. So number 91, we have 5r minus 7 times 5r squared minus 4r minus 5. So making our box, we have 5r minus 7 and we have 5r squared minus 4r minus 5. Multiplying everything out, we have 5r times 5r squared, so that will be 25r cubed. We have 5r times negative 4r, so negative 20r squared. 5r times negative 5, negative 25r. We have negative 7 times 5r squared, so negative 35r squared. We have 7 times, or negative 7 times negative 4r, which is positive 28r. And then we have negative 7 times negative 5, which is positive 35. Adding everything together, we have r squareds here that group, and we have r's that group here. This is 25r cubed. We have negative 35 minus 20. That's going to give us negative 55r squared. We have positive 28r minus 25r. So that's going to be positive 3r. And then plus 35 for our last one. And this is our final answer. Our next one, we have 92. So we have. 8, oops, started writing r because I've been using r a lot. So we have 8k minus 3, and we have 8k, I don't know why I wrote cubed there, 8k squared plus 7k plus 6, and we make our box. So we have our 8k minus 3, and then 8k squared plus 7k plus 6. So 8k times 8k squared is 64k cubed. 8k times 7k is 56k squared. 8k times 6 is 48k. Negative 3 times 8k squared is negative 24k squared. 
negative 3 times 7k, negative 21k. And negative 3 times positive 6 is negative 18. Okay, just making sure I did everything right. And so, combining everything together, we have our k squared is here, our k is there. So this is 64k cubed. We have 56 minus 24, that's going to be 32k squared. We have 48 minus 21, which is going to be 27k. And then minus 18. And so this is our final answer. And now I think this is where the box method really shines for something like number uh, 93 through 96. So for 93, we have 6b squared plus 2b minus 3, and we're multiplying that with 6b squared minus 2b minus 7. So I'm going to write our final answer under this because this is going to get a little bit long, but I'll make a really big box. So since we have a trinomial times a trinomial, so a polynomial with three terms times a polynomial with three terms, We have a 3x3 three three box because of that. And so I'll put the first one here on the side. We have 6b squared plus 2b minus 3. And the other one we have 6b squared minus 2b. I'm sorry if my b's look like 6's. I've tried to fix it all my life. And I don't think that's happening in this video. But we have 6b squared times 6b squared. We have 36b to the fourth. 6b squared times negative 2b is going to be negative 12b cubed. And then we have 6b squared times negative 7, which is negative 42b squared. Uh, the next one I'll make my box a little bit bigger so I can write everything in there. Uh, but then we have 2b times 6b squared, 12b cubed. We have 2b times negative 2b, it's negative 4b squared. We have 2b times negative 7, which is negative 14b. We have negative 3 times sec uh, 6b squared, it's negative 18b squared. We have negative 3 minus uh, times negative 2b, which is positive 6b. And then we have negative 3 times negative 7, and that's going to be positive 21. So this shines because we have our b cubed right here. We have our b squareds right here. And we have our b's right here. So when we're combining all of our like terms, we just have to look along the diagonals, and we have all of the stuff that combines together. So our first term here that doesn't combine with anything is 36b to the fourth. Notice we have 12b cubed minus 12b cubed. That goes away. Next we have the b squareds. So we have negative 42 minus 4 minus 18. And if we compute that out, it comes to negative 64b squared. Then we have 6b minus 14b. So that's going to be negative 8b. And then we have plus 21. And so this is our final answer. So a quick point I want to make is that if we used uh, some kind of a analogous word to foil uh, for a polynomial, uh, two, uh, two polynomials multiplied together like this, uh, we would have a lot of arcs to make. Uh, we basically have, we have to multiply this times that 
times that, uh, this times that, and that, and that, and then this times that, and that, and that. And making sure that you multiply everything together and writing it all out uh, can get kind of uh, a little bit messy if you're writing it all in line. And so this is why, again, I advocate for box method because it makes sure that we multiply everything correctly because we have to fill out the entire grid and then combine like terms. And bonus is that if, it, if both of our polynomials are in standard form, uh, assuming we're not missing any uh, terms, like, you know, we don't have like b squared and I'm uh, missing that, but then again, it'd be a, a two by three grid at that point. But we will have our terms that group together, usually along these diagonals here. That uh, just depends on what terms you have missing. But yeah, let's look at number 94. So for number 94, we have 7v squared minus 3v plus 4 times 6v squared minus 8v minus 5. I'll write our answer right here. I'll make a bigger box so that everything is clearer. Over here we have 7r squared minus 3r plus 4. And on the top we have 7r. Oh, it's v. Sorry about that. Okay. Sorry, those look kind of similar too. I'm, I'm yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Ah, I wrote it again. R. Okay. B. B. There we go. This is why handwriting matters on penmanship. So, we have 7v squared times 6v squared. Uh, that's going to come out to 42v squared. We have 7v squared times negative 8v which is, uh, let's see, negative 56v cubed. I don't like to multiply by 7s either. Looking at you, Torn. 7v squared minus uh, times negative 5. We have negative 35v squared. Uh, negative 3v times 6v squared. We have negative 18v cubed. Negative 3v times negative 8v is going to be positive 24v squared. Negative 3v times negative 5 is positive 15v. 4 times 6v squared is 24v squared. 4 times negative 8v is negative 32v. And 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. So we want to combine everything together, fortunately, and everything groups along our, along our diagonals here. And so our first term is 42v squared. Negative 56 minus 18 is negative 74, so v cubed. 24v plus 24v minus 35v, that's going to be 48 minus 35 which is 13v squared. We have 15v minus 32v. That's going to be negative 17v. And then our last term is minus 20. And so that is our final answer. For number 95. We have 6r squared minus 3r minus 4 times 8r squared 
plus 5r plus 3. I'll write our answer below that and I'll make, a, um, make our box. Okay, so we have 6r squared here, minus 3r, minus 4. We have 8r squared, plus 5r, plus 3. So, 6r squared times 8r squared, we have 48r to the 4th. 6r squared times 5r is 30r cubed. We have 6r squared times 3, 18r squared. Negative 3r times 8r squared is negative 24r cubed. 3r, negative 3r times 5r is negative 15r squared. Negative 3r times 3 is negative 9r. Negative 4 times 8r squared is negative 32r squared. Negative 4 times 5r is negative 20r. And negative 4 uh, times negative 3 is negative 12. Our like terms group along the diagonals here. And so our first term is 48 r to the fourth. Then we have 30 r cubed minus 24 r cubed. So 30 minus 24 is 6. So we have 6 r cubed. We have 18 minus 15, which is 3, and then minus 32r, so that's going to come out to negative 29r squared. And then we have negative 9r minus 20r, so minus 29r, and then our last term is minus 12. And so this is our final answer. For the last one, we have 96. So we have 2x squared minus 2x plus 7 times 4x squared minus 7x minus 8. I'll write our answer down here. And making our box, We have 2x squared minus 2x plus 7 times 4x squared minus 7x minus 8. So 2x squared times 4x squared is 8x to the fourth. 2x squared times negative 7x is negative 14x cubed. 2x squared times negative 8 negative 6, uh, negative 16x squared. Negative 2x times 4x squared is negative 8x cubed. Negative 2x times 14, uh, sorry, times negative 7x, getting ahead of myself. We have 14x squared. Negative 2x times negative 8 is positive 16x. 7 times 4x squared 28x squared. 7 times negative 7x is negative 49x. And 7 times negative 8 is negative 56. Combining all of our like terms, conveniently group along the diagonals. And our first term is 8. I don't know why I write an R. 8x to the fourth. Negative 8 minus 14 is negative 22. Again, I wrote an R. I don't know why. x cubed. And we have 28 plus 14 minus 16. Uh, well, these two combine as negative 2, so it's really just 28 minus 2. So this is, will be plus 26x squared. And then we have negative 49 plus 16. That's going to be negative 
x, and then we have minus 56. And so, this is our final answer. And so, that concludes uh, video 8. Uh, so, that's, uh, that's it. I hope this helped. And so, I'll see you in the next one.